Hey guys, it is Tyler here, back once again, this time with my review of Assassin's Creed Origins. Now this will be sp as spoiler free as possible, there will be minor spoiler details and hints to things, but I'm not going to go into full detail on anything specifically, so don't worry too much about that. Now I'm not going to go either into like some massive comprehensive review of every single detail I think, because there are plenty of stuff I want to talk about in their own separate videos that I'm going to break down from Assassin's Creed Origins. This is just going to be a general review of my thoughts of the game and it, all its elements within it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Assassin's Creed Origins feels like a total reboot to a long and historic gaming franchise that has given its fans some of the highest highs and the lowest lows. Origin takes place between 49 BCE and 44 BCE in Egypt during the Roman occupation. The main protagonist is Egypt's last Magi, Bayek of Siwa, whose character is the highlight of the game's story. Alongside two other playable characters, Bayek's wife Aya, and the modern day's newest protagonist, Layla. Origins' departure from the standard action-adventure style that has defined the franchise for the past decade gives the game's new massive open-world RPG elements a freshness that the Assassin's Creed franchise has been desperate for for several years now. In so many ways, Origins' extra year of development is as clear as day, from the expansive and deep story all the way to its massive open world and scale of activities and small details that make it one of the best installments in the franchise's history. When it comes to the storyline, there's definitely some pacing issues from start to finish. It felt like a classic AC storyline in terms of memorable characters that are spread throughout, as well as a revenge plotline with lots of different targets that you build up to and in turn assassinate eventually. However, with the game's sheer scale, it felt like those characters that you needed in terms of memorability were fewer and further between than maybe were necessary. Though overall, the storyline gave huge depth and real reasons to get behind the new protagonist Bayek with the death of his son. Bayek's character, his depth, going from a dark and intense figure to a kind-hearted father figure, shows the real detail Origins put into it. He cares about people and his individual goals. He is a completely broken man inside. From the start to the finish of this game, Bike is completely fixated on revenge. It develops though throughout the game where he finds a whole new purpose of life. Because how does a parent go on after a child dies? You wonder that yourself and you see why he does what he does. It makes total sense to him as a character and he stays true to that the entire storyline. Though you see from what he sees, what he does, what he accomplishes and the people he touches, the new way of thinking that he starts to develop and the new purpose he builds throughout the end of the game. It is clear he is not in touch with the way the world is moving and is constantly fighting for the past, for his country and for his family. This whole plotline is juxtaposed by his wife's storyline, Aya, who is completely devoted to Cleopatra. Who Cleopatra herself as a character is not developed or really fleshed out as a leader. We're given no reason to understand Aya's reasoning for wanting to be so devoted to Cleopatra that she'll give up her whole love of Bayek and her family and her past. It wasn't really up until the end of the game that you see how her story becomes kind of full circle and you kind of know her purpose. Though I really didn't enjoy her as a character, I felt very unsure of her and uneasy of her from right at this first meeting with her and Bayek. It was clear that he was much more in love with her than she was with him. And when it comes to a relationship like that, I felt like I was being told as a player to feel an unease in this relationship. And I definitely did, but not from Bayek's side, only from Aya's side. And her whole storyline, again, just didn't really make much sense in terms of why she was doing what she was doing. The combination though of Bayek and Aya was interesting and refreshing the way their relationship was depicted as extremely violent but also a very sexual family element to it which is quite interesting and a bit of dark element to that as well. The two have a clearly very intense connection and the building of the Assassin Order throughout the storyline was impacted greatly by the back and forth push and pull of the relationship between Bayek and Aya. It was their disagreements and their alternate points of view that combined to help build what the Order's foundation ended up being and that to me was really incredible and that's pretty much exactly what I wanted it to be. It didn't make sense that it was just one guy that did all these things. It felt like there had to be a combination of points of view that kind of clashed to build an order as prolific as the Assassins. In terms of the open world experience, the open world is massive. 
vibrant and full of things to do and explore. It was by far the best open world experience I've had in an Assassin's Creed game. There was a great variety of landscapes, levels, and movement progressions to feel like you aren't in one place for too long, but long enough for you to remember that area. The only thing that let down the open world was Ubisoft's constant devotion towards bragging about how much they were putting into their games, showing you the exact locations that has something in it. It told you every single point of interest, and it makes the open world feel like it's telling you what the important bits are, and that means everything else in between those important bits are useless and only there as an aesthetic to get from point A to point B. It takes away from the exploration factor, since the exploring is done on the map screen and hardly running around trying to find the locations yourself. The customization was certainly the weaker part of Origins. I felt like the crafting system was improved from games like Black Flag, though it definitely has room to grow. The weapons variety was nice, and I do feel like I did have a choice to pick what weapons I like to suit my specific playstyle, especially with the ranged weapons. The outfits were definitely lacking in quality, I never really found an outfit I truly enjoyed. Some simple stuff, like a die system, could have definitely fixed a lot of these issues as well, which is unfortunate because die systems have been seen in almost every single Assassin's Creed game. The whole gameplay of Origins is refreshing, but still feels enough like Assassin's Creed. This is probably the highlight of the whole game to me. The stealth and combat systems were by far and away the best in the franchise's history. I felt like I could be stealthy, really making me feel like an assassin, if I was willing to put in the patience and plan my approach when it came to infiltrating some sort of area or assassinating a target. If I got caught or got into combat, I still wasn't too upset because the new combat system felt systemic, balanced, and made me feel challenged, yet I still felt like a badass. This is a complete opposite to games like Unity that was only three years ago where every time I was being stealthy it just never seemed to work and it felt impossible and every time I got into combat I was furious and mad because the combat system barely worked and was completely out of balance. Though there may not be social stealth in particular in terms of the stealth system, most of the game is spent in sort of battle areas, so I did feel as though there weren't as many options when it came to assassinations to like blend into a crowd or something like that. So for what it was, I really thought the cell system is the best the franchise has ever had. Now when it comes to the last thing, which is the modern day, I really don't have much to say about it. It felt weak, and it felt pointless. It felt like a waste of time, and honestly after 10 years of build up of this franchise, it's an inexcusable modern day segment. It's as, just as inexcusable to me as Unity's, and as Black Flags, and as Syndicate's. Just because they've now given us a third person protagonist within the modern day, doesn't automatically make it good. There's only three two minute segments in the whole modern day that doesn't really develop Layla as a character unless you search it out. It doesn't really develop anything she's doing, all the work she's trying to achieve, or anything else we've been waiting to see with Juno for all these years. It's completely inexcusable and totally lacking, and there's no excuse for saying it's building up to something. This has been a 10 year franchise now. We don't have time to be building up to anything anymore. Things have got to be happening, or you don't need to be doing it at all. The only reason I give this modern day a pass is because it's so short and the rest of the game is so long you completely forget it's even there most of the time. Overall Assassin's Creed Origins felt like the reboot the Assassin's Creed franchise needed and what we asked for. It improved the quality of storytelling, its characters and gameplay to a massive level in comparison to the games of the past 5 years. Though it wasn't perfect with its strange pacing at times, Aya's nonsensical plot, and an unforgivable modern day 10 years into this franchise. To me, the sheer size of the game, the enjoyment I had throughout it, as well as the pleasure to play as a character as awesome as Bayek, the pros of this game far outweighed the cons in my opinion. This is the best Assassin's Creed game I have played that is not a part of the Ezio trilogy. I'd honestly give Assassin's Creed Origins 9 out of 10. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching my review of Assassin's Creed Origins. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And I will be back soon for more Assassin's Creed Origins content. And I'm, the things I talk about, some of these negative points, but also positive points I made in this review, I'm going to do whole separate videos on going real into detail with things like Arya's plot, the modern day, the combat system, the stealth system, all these sorts of things that can be improved and worked on, I really want to talk about in their own separate videos, and I only kind of just touched upon them here in this review. So anyway guys, thank you again for watching, and I will see you guys next time.